Hi everyone, happy snow day. Um, so I'm here to talk through the tutoring philosophy statement, which is um, a very particular sort of genre, um, and one that if you're planning to go into education in any capacity, that um, will be useful for you to be familiar with. So what I wanted to do with this tutorial is show you a number of resources I provided for you on Blackboard and kind of try to talk through them very briefly with you. So the overall goal of a tutoring philosophy statement is to answer questions related to, that, that kind of outline what it is you believe in as a tutor. Um, basically, you're looking at underlying ideologies, theories, and philosophies that guide what it is you do in a Writing Center tutorial session. So what I've brought here for you, uh, or yeah, posted here for you, are um, first some core questions I thought were useful for you to kind of think about um, when uh, approaching the assignment. Um, you know, related to what the work of tutoring is, what the role and identity of a tutor is. Um, so these are kind of here to jog your, uh, jog your thinking. But um, I might particularly point you towards these three URLs that I've posted down here. Um, and I've already opened these in new tabs, so I'm going to go ahead and go through them very quickly. So the first, this is a philosophy of tutoring assignment assigned by um, another professor, uh, Susan Spangler at uh, SUNY Fredonia. And she provides a pretty useful talk through, just in writing, of what a teaching philosophy in, or, or tutoring philosophy is, which is very closely related to what a teaching philosophy statement is. Um, so basically your goal is to kind of keep your feet on the ground while giving us a sense for some of the more complex philosophical stuff that guides what you do as a tutor. Um, and I think that she does a nice job of kind of outlining that here. Beliefs, assumptions, and knowledge that kind of guide what you do, your experiences. Um, and this is a really useful document for thinking through how it is you go about the business of tutoring. And as she says here towards the end, um, you know, a, a philosophy tutoring statement and, or a teaching philosophy statement, these are document, these are living documents. These are documents that will kind of just never finish being revised as long as you, you know, continue tutoring and teaching. Um, so keep in mind that you're beginning a first draft towards this and you're starting to develop your sense of who you are as a tutor. And so, um, you know, it's okay for the tutoring philosophy statement to kind of be at those beginning stages. Uh, you know, you're still thinking through who you are as a tutor. You're still thinking through what works in a writing center tutorial session. Um, so that's something to keep in mind as you approach this assignment. Um, and, you know, related to what she tells her class, uh, Professor um, Spangler, we have in class done some free writing and exercises and thinking, um, and as well, the assignments you've been working on so far this semester, um, all of this stuff can feed into your draft of your tutoring philosophy statement. So what you might want to do to start this draft is to just start gathering materials together um, and start listing out ideas, start just kind of trying to capture it all. Um, so maybe just beginning that way. Take a look through a couple in-class writing um, bits you've done and take a look at it and see what might be useful for thinking about articulating who you are as a tutor, what you do, what you believe in. Okay, so again, this is a really useful statement that I would encourage you to read through more uh, carefully in your own time. Now, the other two hyperlinks that I've provided on Blackboard are both links for writing a philosophy of teaching statement. But again, a philosophy of teaching statement is such a similar kind of document that I think this stuff can still be useful for you. These are both documents I used myself when writing a philosophy uh, teaching statement. Um, this one comes from the Center for the Advancement of Teaching at The Ohio State University. And um, some stuff here won't be transferable. For instance, um, they, they state that the third kind of thing a statement, the statement does is tie together your portfolio. You don't have a teaching portfolio. I'm not asking you to develop one. Um, but this will kind of demonstrate that you're a reflective and purposeful tutor. And um, it will communicate your goals as a tutor and, and how that relates to your actions and practices in a tutoring session. Um, so they kind of give some background on what, why these things are written. 
um, and they give some general formatting suggestions. And I think the first is important to remember. You're probably kind of wondering, so what is this supposed to look like? What is it supposed to be formatted like? And it's true that there's no wrong way to write one, which is what makes it so challenging. Um, you know, some people do something multimodal, you know, they say create visuals. Um, some people use section headers, some people just kind of write through. Um, some people, you know, it, it can kind of look, it can kind of look differently. So this I would recommend you, you uh, keep in mind, generally one to two pages in length. And when they say one to two pages, they do mean single space pages. Um, and I think that these are really useful general formatting suggestions to keep in mind. And then they give a list of examples. Now, I do have some tutoring philosophy statement examples I'll show you in a minute. But if you were looking for even more examples, these are teaching philosophy statements, a bit different, but still they're kind of here for your perusal. All right, and of course, even more websites with references. So the second website, I include this because, um, again, this is one of two websites I referenced heavily when I developed a first draft of my teaching philosophy statement. This is a really useful website, I think, um, to complement the last one we just looked at from Ohio State. So this is for the um, Teaching uh, Support Administrative Center at Iowa State this time, right? Last one was from the Teaching Support Center um, at Ohio State. This one is organized around four guiding questions. To what end, by what means, to what degree, and why? And they go on to break down what they mean by each of those questions. I think that's a really useful way of thinking about this statement that kind of differs from the resource I last pointed you to. And so it might be a good idea for you to take a look at as well to get started. Okay, so again, these are three resources I provided here on this um, assignments page in Blackboard, as well as some core questions you might also consider. Okay, so these are four different resources you might use to give you ideas to get started. What I'll show you now is um, that I've also posted some samples. So if you follow the samples folder, as I have done, you'll see that there are two sources here. The first comes from a peer tutor here at UC who took the course last year and would have come in to speak to, with us the day that Zohair and Jeff came in, but she is currently studying abroad in Berlin, so is out of the country. But she has graciously given us permission to take a look at her writing. Um, which I've already opened here. Now, what I want to, um, as you can see, this is eight pages long. So what I want to say about this is that last year, they were not asked to write a research paper because the course was on quarters, so it was five weeks shorter. Um, so they were instead asked to develop um, a much more thorough researched um, philosophy of tutoring statement. So I'm not looking for you to develop one this long. Um, this is about twice as long as I'm looking for you to develop. So this is useful because I think that Claire is a uh, thoughtful tutor and that you know this is a nice accessible sample for you to look at from someone here at UC who took this course last year. But again, keep in mind that this is much longer than I'm looking for. But that's there for your perusal. Um, what I've also included now, these are not people I know. I just kind of simply Googled philosophy of tutoring statement, and this is what I came up with. The last three samples seem to come from the same class. And what's nice about these samples is that they have both a draft and a final version. So I've kind of linked both, but you can also navigate on their um, ePortfolio websites. So uh, for instance, if you just mouse over her essay, it shows a drop down where you can look at both the draft version and the final version. And what you'll notice about the draft version of these is that they're usually longer. And then when the student moves to the final version, notice how this has tightened up and gotten much shorter. So that's also a drafting strategy to keep in mind that you can kind of start more broadly and then together in class, in workshop, we can kind of look at this and say what's most important to kind of hone in on. Um, but I think that these are all nice accessible um, samples for you to look at. Um, and they kind of show the range of approaches to the assignment. Um, although again, keep in mind that maybe possibly all four of these, but certainly the last three seem to be coming from, yeah, I think this is, seem to be coming from the same class. So while I think they're good samples, keep in mind that they're being pitched in the same way and being taught by the same instructor. So these all are gonna look pretty similar to each other um, you may want to kind of 
browse around and see what else people are doing because you can, again, kind of make this your own. You can really do, um, you know, really be creative and just kind of see what works for you in terms of the formatting and the setup of the document. As long as you're getting at those main goals of articulating your guiding philosophies and beliefs and illustrating how they um, translate into practices. So those are there for you under samples. And again, I have those other links under assignments. Um, so thanks for listening.